Hi, I'm Marlon Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I have got another episode of March Character Creation Mayhem for you guys. We are going to be using um, a little bit of a different game. This game is called The Nightmares Underneath, and it is a um, kind of an interesting particular sort of uh, OSR game, but with a number of uh elements that are really unique in a lot of ways um which i think is really cool basically um in particular there's a really strong um element of the setting that has a whole kind of um metaphysical logic to it there, there's a whole thing that has to do with um people's dreams essentially and the way that those um interact with their uh uh the world in a sense and especially the way that kind of negative emotions and things like that interact with the world and then it creates these kind of allows these demonic entities to enter the world and attach themselves to objects and that's sort of the logic for like dungeons and treasure and so the the heroes who are going on dungeon delves part of their job is or their their sort of role in society has to do with um removing these treasures from these um nightmare incursions into reality so that the so that the demons can't have anything that they are attached to anymore so that the incursions will just sort of fade away and things like that it's it's a really cool thing um that i think is pretty fun um but it is a a, a unique uh flavor and style um you could probably do um, some level of kind of tinkering with a lot of the stuff to play in a more kind of trad fantasy style um, and, and in a world that is more inspired by the sort of standard D&D worlds. But I don't see why you would because it's so cool. Um, so anyway, let's go over it. There is not a Roll20 sheet for this game. Um, so this is one of the, um, the PDF that comes with a whole bunch of character sheets has a number of character sheets of uh, various different styles. And so you can kind of pick whichever one is most appropriate to your style of note taking and stuff. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a, a neat thing. Um, so I just used a, a PDF splitter to grab this version of the sheet um, because I didn't know what character class we were necessarily going to play. Although if you were playing with a, a group, you might print out there's a, another version of the sheet that will have character class information in this section that will talk about sort of what is the, the kind of thing that your character class or profession, technically, that's what they call it, the profession. What is the thing that they do? Um, what are they, they sort of good at and all that sort of stuff, um, which is a cool thing, especially for like teaching people the game and all that sort of stuff. The other thing that we're going to do that is a little bit different is that in addition to uh, not using a roll 20, we are also not going to use a roll 20 to roll dice. I have some physical dice here. They're just normal red physical six siders. Um, D6s, I have four of them that I went ahead and grabbed. Um, we're only ever going to roll three of them at once um, uh, for character creation, I believe. Um, I don't think there are any other things that you need to use for character creation. Um, I guess maybe we might have to do uh, a couple of other things, although we might just choose some of, let me double check some of these other um, places where so that is that's d100 rolls that's a 3d6 roll that's d10 rolls well i have a bunch of those things here um so i guess i can do the 3d6 and if i need to do any d100s i've got a a d10 in the the dice uh spot which is basically just a, a small tupperware container that has a couple of dice in it that sits right down here right right basically at the intersection between my monitors. Um, so that's a whole thing. But anyway, um, so yeah, we're going uh, old school analog. Well, not entirely analog, because obviously I'm still doing this on a computer, but you know what I mean. Um, the only other change I'm going to make to character creation is that um, we are going to do 3D6 down the line, but we are going to allow 
uh, the character for one of their scores before they roll. They have to pick which score it is before they roll. They can say that um, one of their dice will be transformed into a six. Their lowest die will turn into a six. And so the um, average result for that score will be higher. And I suspect we will just use ferocity as that one for us because I like to play kind of fighter types, although we could do something more kind of with dexterity or something, but I think ferocity will be good. So I, I, let's plan on that. I will plan on using that for ferocity, um, but maybe if I get there and I decide, you know, it might be fun to do intelligence or willpower, I will do that. Anyway. Oh boy, that is not so good. So we have got, let me go to the typewriter function. We have got... Uh, and we're going to go back down to 14 size font. We have got an 8 for our charisma score. So current 8, and that is a modifier of minus 1. So that's not so good. Let's see what we get for dexterity. That is significantly better. That is a 14. Yeah. 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 3 is 14, so that is a 14. And it is currently a 14, and that means the modifier is a plus 1. So that's pretty good. Ferocity, so we're going to do our um, turn a die into a 6 thing for this one. Hopefully get a good ferocity. So we have got a 5 and a 4 and a 3, but the 3 becomes a 6, so that means we have a 15 in ferocity. 15 ferocity. 15, and that is also a plus one. Um, the attribute scores, a lot of the stuff that you do in the game uses a d20 roll under your attribute score, or if it is um, a situation where it's something that for whatever reason, um, there's both advantage and disadvantage, and then also a system of using half your attribute score in situations where it's like, for instance, one of the examples that they use is if you are doing something that your character knows how to do, right, it's a skill that they have developed and they have the right tools for the job, then you roll under the full attribute. If you are in a situation where your character, you know, has the tools but not necessarily has developed the skills or has the skills but doesn't really have the right tools for the job, then you roll under half the attribute rounding down. And then if you are in a situation where you have neither, you just can't do it, right? So like picking a lock when you don't know how to pick locks is a little bit like if I myself tried to pick a lock, which is to say that I would just make a fool of myself. Um, all right, so, um, but what that means is that 15 ferocity is uh, useful, even though it only has the same plus one modifier as the 14 dexterity. Um, and then there are certain situations where you use the modifier. So like, I think that attack rolls um, use the modifier rather than the score, um, but I don't remember for certain. Um, and so that sort of uh, levels out some of the stuff that goes on with the... Um, the characters and then you get bonuses based on your class and you know if you have magic weapons and things like that so that is a 12 for health so that doesn't give us any bonus but a 12 is still better than the average so it's not bad let's see about our intelligence that is a 15 for intelligence. Nice. And we didn't even have to do any. If we had known, we could have gotten a 16 intelligence with our, our special thing. But nope, we just got our 15. And uh, so that is what's going on there. And then willpower. That is another 8. That's 8. 8. Minus 1. So not so useful for the willpower, but okay for all of the other stuff. Um, so what else do we need to do? Now that we have generated our scores, we need to choose our profession. And I think we will be a fighter because I like fighters in games like this. I don't think there is a character that uses... Uh, uh, sort of like a, a, a warrior mage type. So I think we will just accept that. All right, fighters have a hit die of 1d8. Let me do profession here, fighter. And we are level one. 
and we are alignment. I guess we have to choose an alignment at some point. Um, let me see if it says much about alignment. I think it's a little later in the book, but we might go ahead and choose it now. Um, alignment. Um, you know, choose one and one only of the following alignments for your character. Chaotic, evil, good, lawful, or neutral. Um, I think we will choose to be lawful. That seems like a fun thing. Um, yeah, let's be a lawful alignment. A lawful fighter. That's very much the sort of thing that I like to play, but I don't care. I'm going to play it anyway. Um, our hit die is... 1d8 and there's an interesting thing where in this game you basically uh don't have like a consistent set of hit points you have a rolled set of hit points in particular situations which is kind of a um a, an odd thing um but yeah so um social class and motives we're not going to do that yet um do 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 we need to record some of our special abilities so let's do skills First, skilled at fighting, foraging, hunting, laboring, scavenging, soldiering, and keeping their equipment in good working order. Um, skills. Fighting, foraging, hunting, laboring, scavenging, soldiering, maintaining equipment and thought comma potentially other skills based on that story all right what else do we get we have some special abilities when you make a physical attack you inflict additional damage whether you hit or miss oh boy that is uh, pretty serious. So, um, extra damage plus 1d8 at levels 1 to 3. And we'll just leave that as that. Um, when your disposition is lower than your level, if you join the fight or press the attack, you may increase your disposition so it equals your level. Um, when disposition is lower than level and increase to level by joining the fight or pressing the attack awesome because we're a fighter that's that's how we do our thing you can always add your level to any physical attacks and intimidation attempts you make that are overcome rolls. Um, add level to physical attacks and intimidation attempts that are overcome rolls. All right, and then we get to choose one of the following martial styles to determine your fourth special ability. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I like the idea of getting the armored one. That's the knight. Um, Janissary also looks pretty good because that kind of helps your buddies out. Yeah, let's do knight because I think that will be knight. Armor does not count as in humbering but shields do still so we can wear armor without using up our encumbering items which we can only carry four of with our 12 health which is another cool thing that i really like um, I don't remember how much I've talked about it, it on the YouTube channel, but on the podcast, I've talked a couple of times about how constitution is what should be used for 
um, your ability to carry heavy loads because it's not as important that you are strong enough to lift it, but more important that you can endure the process of walking around with a whole bunch of stuff in your backpack and all of that sort of stuff. So that is uh, a whole thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is your, your hit dice is the die type you roll for damage and to determine your disposition. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, so it's it's just a, a D8, not a 1D8. Yeah, D8. Um, primary attributes, we have a primary attributes of ferocity and health. If both your attributes are 13 or higher, 10% bonus on experience points. If only one is 5%, both are 8 or lower, minus 10% penalty on experience points. So we get a plus 5%. Plus five percent XP. Um, to do, do restrictions, skills, special abilities, some spell stuff, some of the magic stuff, alignment that we chose, money and equipment. Each player begins with three d six times ten ciphers to spend on starting equipment can only carry without penalty a number of regular encumbering items equal to their health modifier plus four. And a number of small items equal to their current health score. Interesting, interesting. Um, doo -doo -doo. And we are gonna roll for our social class. And we're just gonna do a straight 3d6 roll that is not so good. That is only a six. So we are social class. Um, many peasants, most successful criminals, poor proletariats, well-off servants, and slaves. So peasant minus one. So we get a penalty um, the, there's a cool thing in here about using your social class in place of your charisma modifier um, when you interact with new people who kind of don't know you and then use your charisma um, later um, for stuff. And then we also need to figure out our cash money. So let's do that. Ooh, better on that one. That is an 11 for our money. So we have 110. One ten C, and then we also have motives. So there, it's actually it's sort of two D ten tables, but it's actually one D twenty table if that makes sense. Which is to say, you are either you can't work a normal job or you must fight the nightmare incursions. So if you roll above a ten, you are fighting the nightmare incursions because of something you care about, and if you roll below a ten, you're unable to work a normal job, basically, which is a funny thing. It's a little bit like Torchbearer, where they talk about how you're, uh, you know, the scraping the earth. Um, you can't work a normal job because you are hated by other members of your profession. Hated by soldiers. So apparently Arshak is hated by mercenaries or soldiers or something, and so he is, uh, yeah not doing so good um do, 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 do. we da, 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 da. what else do we need to do we will do armor and speed so we're gonna try to avoid being encumbered so it's seven plus dexterity modifiers that is an eight um your wounds score starts at zero your disposition and psychic armor if you're a scholar or a wizard. Um, and so we could roll uh, 2d8 for our current disposition for our character if we wanted to. Um, we will need to purchase some equipment. Um, and there's some rules about what armor stuff says what um armor 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 um well 
heavy armor would be almost all of our gear or all of our, our money. So we wouldn't have any weapons. So we're not going to do that. I guess we will go with light armor. Um, so we will do light armor. And that gives us a 13. Um, and then we will also, I guess, get a shield because it seems like it's worth doing that. And that will be an encumbering item. Shield. Plus one. So armor. Um, is there any... Do you get a dex bonus on armor also? Um, on armor characters? No, you don't get any type of dex bonus for armor. So that's fun. Um, so we have an armor a rating of 14. That's what people need to roll to hit us, basically. Um, and that... Uh, the shield counts as one encumbrance. Heavy armor, light armor would normally count as one encumbrance, but because we're a knight, we can just have it be a small item. Heavy armor and plate would count as two or three encumbering items, so you can see why being a knight is really useful for that sort of encumbrance stuff. Um, close combat weapons. Um, I think we will try to get ourselves a sword because a one-handed sword seems like the thing to get. Um, yeah, let's do a... Well, or we could do like a mace or something. Let's do... So I, I think we'll do a sword because we're going to spend our money on a sword. A normal sword, and so that means we have spent... 25 plus 15 is 40, plus another 25 is 65 out of 110 is, what, 120. So that is going to be, um, what, 45 left? 65 plus 45 is 110. Yeah, so 45 ciphers left. Um, we should probably get ourselves some sort of weapon for range. Um, seems like that would be useful. So, but I don't know what else we might want to get because there's a number of different kind of equipment things. Um, but let's, oh, then there's some random starting gear that you can uh, do for your character. So that's fun. Um, that basically lets you get some cool stuff there if you want to roll uh, random equipment. But I think we will just get ourselves, we will get a light crossbow. Light crossbow. And that is our third encumbering item. And we will also get ourselves um, 24 bolts or crossbow. And so that will be taking us down to eight ciphers. And I guess we could get something small. Um, we probably want a backpack to put stuff in. So I think that will be our last encumbering item. Backpack. Um, and that takes us down to three coins available we have zero xp and we could roll our current disposition but we will roll it when we enter the dungeon or things like that later anyway so that is uh, our character arshak who is a um a, a peasant who has somehow um been trained as a knight and so he is able to wear heavy armor more effectively which is uh useful for being a uh, a warrior type um he's only level one right now he is lawful a fighter and he's hated by the other members of the fighter community apparently so he can't just work a normal mercenary job the way that they would um he's got a sort of interesting collection of stats in particular he's got that big intelligence 
for 3d6 15 on 3d6 obviously is, is uh surprisingly high so that's pretty cool um armor 14 speed 8 he's got a shield a sword a light crossbow and a backpack he has light armor and 24 bolts for his crossbow and apparently nothing else because we didn't think to buy anything so hopefully he doesn't need any rations on traveling to the dungeon um doesn't know any spells because he's not a caster and he's got some skills and damage um, bonuses and things like that. So that is his whole thing. That's uh, that's Arshok the Fighter. Um, anyway, yeah, Nightmares Underneath is a really interesting game. I think I might have a print-on-demand copy of the first edition book from Lulu, if I remember correctly. I didn't think to check my um, shelf to see if I have that or anything, um, but I seem to remember that I had a, a physical print version of this book, but it was earlier. Um, anyway, so what they're on is the second edition now, um, and there is actually a um, free version of the second edition book. I don't know what the difference is. Um, I assume that the free version doesn't have any art and that it might also not have some of the like, you know, random tables for randomly generating stuff, but that it would have all of like the core rules. Um, but I haven't checked that yet. So I can't really explain. I can't really tell you exactly what that version has or doesn't have. So, um, I guess check that out for yourself. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting it, and it's got a really cool kind of, um, uh, Arabian Nights flavor fantasy that I think is really interesting. It's, it's, just, it's a really unique world with some interesting kind of twists on kind of normal fantasy adventuring games. Um, and it does some cool stuff. Like it, it really ex is explicitly a dungeon clearing game, right? That the 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 kind of structure of the game is built around this idea of going into these nightmare dungeon incursions and clearing them out and bringing treasure back to civilization um and a lot of the other stuff is just not really part of what the game is about um which is to say that if you are one of those people like me who really likes to um play games with like a specific focus like that and things like that that you may enjoy it if you are one of those people that wants a game that can do everything this may not be the game for you but you know you could probably tinker with it if you wanted to but i don't see why you would i guess is what i'm saying um anyway that is uh, gonna be that for this episode of march character creation mayhem hope you guys are uh, enjoying it obviously we're, we're closing in on the end of march character creation mayhem for 2022 so uh yeah. I've been Arlen Walker. I've been live from Pelham's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.